think yeah. there's a, for the audience's sake and everyone watching at home, this is a request of, to, for agreement with HealthLink, the city CMS provider, to rent a lease space for bunks uh, in stations two and three, as well as page uh, locations, $1,000 a month per station, um, and would help offset the cost of opening those stations.
daily staffing they had to deal with. So if you know if people called in and wanted to have one of the outstations, they might only have two people there. They were breaking down to station one and, and closing that station anyway. So that decision was really requested of me at that point in time to to make sure that the resources that we have that there have. So the the financial resources were lack of uh, reopening the stations with the, the grant in place. The grant doesn't cover the expenses related to to running utilities and everything on that. That's why we haven't gone back to the outstations at this point juncture. So do we though on that, since you brought that up, do we have um, I guess the I mean obviously now we have the numbers that we can say we will have full, you know, four that can run an engine. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that's why I want to know. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Not sure. Mr. Pell? Um yeah the the um, Several concerns with this contract. Um, one of the most important is though, that Copeland does not have a contract with the city of Taylor. Um, I don't believe that that's just a concern of, of members of council, but, but I understand that even Downriver, Downriver Mutual Aid has expressed uh, that, that very concern. And I'm, I don't think I'm in any position to consider putting them in the outstations um, for any reason. Um, unless it's, it's fully above board and, and without contract, I said there's too many liability concerns, there's no operating agreement. I mean, there, there are several things that, that are, are causing me great concerns over this potential agreement, and quite honestly, in its current state, um, I don't believe that I even, even consider going this. Um, can I ask a question on that note? Um, in um, the in uh, 2009, at a meeting in January, Mr. Stollers made a motion, Mr. Ramick at that time was on council, supported it, and that was an agreement for Medic 1 to occupy the uh, old fire station right back here. Yeah. And my understanding was initially there wasn't even a, they weren't paying us even, they were just going to be there in case, right. in case we needed them, and then that was amended to include $300 a month. And no utilities. Could I, could I answer your concern? Uh, well, yes. The city at that point in time was fully transported. It was not going to affect what the city did with ALS. They were going to address overflow concerns. There was an agreement in place. They were paying rent. It was all brought forward. It was all voted on. There was nothing where they were just stuck in the building. Okay, and then, and then I understand if I may continue. Um, I just wanted to continue. Can I just finish on that? Okay. I want to say that. There actually was a grievance filed after that because you're right, we were, we were transporting at that time. So understandably, the firefighters wanted to protect that. And uh, but what I'm saying is that obviously during 2009, which was before we were elected, myself, the mayor, uh, at the mayor as mayor, we were not council at the time. Um, there were uh, obviously the the former administration was looking at ways to maximize public safety and um, and not do it by hiring more people. Than but by, by using um, other resources in the community, even though they were private uh, private companies. So I just want to say this is not, you know, I don't think it's highly unusual. I think that it looks like it was um, tried before and it was and people were in favor of it at one time. Uh, I'm just saying right now we don't have ALS. We don't even have our fire trucks up to speed, mm -hmm. let alone to consider EMT vehicles and all the equipment they would need. We don't know how we're going to pay for the fire uniforms right now. I mean, I, you know, I spoke with the deputy office too about doing some creative things for fundraising, even for trying to raise the money for the fire, um, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. fireproof clothing that they they desperately need to have uh, replaced. So, and you know, with the challenges we're having, I'm I'm, I'm open to creative ways to solve tough problems, Ms. Brandon. The point I wanted to make too is this, um, as it as it was uh, a few years ago, this was a lease agreement, and it, as it is today, that that's brought before council today is a lease agreement. Mm -hmm. it has, it, it's about sharing space, renting leasing space, which is the same concept that we were doing a couple of years ago. So, I think it's very similar.